Hello everyone and welcome back to Foltz Fitness. I'm Hunter Foltz and this is episode 2 of our sub 330 marathon prep. Today I'm going to be going over exactly what is on this table and it's all about shoes. I'm going to go over my shoe rotation um, throughout this prep and just kind of give you some insight on what I'm running in and what I've ran in in the past. So without further ado, let's dive on in. The first shoe I'm going to be diving into is my everyday trainer. I use these for just my everyday easy runs, my recovery runs, um, anything that's um, not speed work or interval related, and that is the Nike Invincible Run 3. Now I got some notes here on my phone that I'm going to go over. Um, like I said, this is my current everyday running shoe. Uh, if I'm just going out for an easy run, which is the majority of my runs, I'm running in these. These come in so many different colors. Nike uh, does a good job of releasing new colors often, and um, these are the ones I went with. I like the orange and black look to them. They weigh about 310 grams, and that would be in a size 10. Um, the drop, which is the offset from the heel to the toe, is 9 millimeters. I really like this shoe. It's got a uh, overall pretty good support and it's still uh, super high cushioning and it's got some responsiveness to it. Um, overall, I'm, I can't complain too much about the shoe. When I first started wearing it, I had a little bit of pain uh, in my calf and ankle area, but that kind of wore off once I got used to the shoe. Um, there's some really good padding included in the heel and on the sides of the shoe. The laces are nice. Um, I really don't have too many complaints about it. It's just overall a uh, good everyday shoe. Um, I've put about 295 miles on these, so they're getting pretty worn in. Um, it's going to be time to upgrade to a new everyday running shoe pretty soon. But yeah, the Nike Invincible 3, it's, it's my go-to easy run shoe, and it's what I'm running in four out of the six days a week that I run. So moving on from that, we have our speed day shoe or long run shoe. And that is currently the Sockney Endorphin Speed 3s. Now, I absolutely love this shoe for multiple reasons. I trained pretty much for my entire 50K in this shoe uh, last year, and I really fell in love with it. So the weight on these is 229 grams, so significantly lighter than the Nike Invincible Run 3. The drop in this is 8 millimeters, so it's 1 millimeter less than the Nikes are, which you probably won't notice much of a difference. These, the main difference in these is these are nylon plated. So a lot of your speed shoes or race shoes are gonna have carbon plates in them um, to help with responsiveness and energy return and giving you that bouncy feel. These are nylon plated, so you're not gonna get quite as much response um, from the nylon plate as you would carbon, but it is a little bit easier on your feet. It's not as hard and your feet won't get worn out and beat up as much in these. Um, like I said, that nylon plate uh, provides a lot of responsiveness, but there is still a good amount of cushion in here. Like I said, I've trained in these from pretty much my entire 50K um, and my feet never got too beat up. I mean, these were super comfortable to train in. Um, uh, this is my second pair of these. Um, they're probably my favorite running shoe that I've used. Um, I've used craft, I've used a couple versions of crafts. Um, I've used Nike, obviously. I've used some Speedlands um, for trail running, but overall, so far, this is by far my favorite running shoe, and it's what I recommend to anybody when they ask me, "Oh, you know, I'm getting into running. What shoe should I buy?" or "What's your go-to running shoe?" The Sockney Endorphin Speed Three is one of the best all all around shoes uh, for running as far as speed and easy runs go. I just happen to like to use them more on my speed and long run days and it saves a little bit of wear on them when I can rotate between two pairs. So go to speed shoe, Sockney Endorphin Speed 3s. They are not going to be available much longer and they're actually liquidating them on their site right now but they're coming out with the Endorphin 4 series so can't wait to try those. I believe those are coming out on February 29th, I believe. So the next shoe in the rotation, but has not seen any action yet, is actually my Marathon Race Day shoe. So when we tow the line on April 28th at the Glass City Marathon to go sub 330, we are going to be rocking the Nike Vaporfly 3s. Like I said, I haven't ran in these yet. These got zero miles on them. 
Um, I actually just picked them up not too long ago, and I'm kind of saving them for closer to the race. I'll run some uh, short uh, intervals with them and probably do my last long run or two in them before the marathon just to make sure they're comfortable. Uh, I don't have any uh, rubbing or blister issues with them, no slipping. So I will put these to the test before the marathon just to be sure. But man, are these shoes awesome looking, first of all. I mean, they just look super cool. Um, they're really light. They come in at 200 grams uh, in a size 10. So obviously the lightest shoe so far and definitely the lightest shoe that I'm going to be showing you today for a reason. It is the race day shoe. Um, the drop on these is 8 millimeters, which is identical to my Endorphin Speed 3s. Uh, I like eight a little bit better than nine. I think on the Invincible Run 3s, the stack is on the heel end is a little bit too high. Um, maybe there's a little bit too much cushion there, which is why I get a little bit of discomfort uh, occasionally on my runs with those, um, particularly in my calf and ankle uh, shin area. Like I said, when I first put those to the test, I had a little bit of pain, but I like the eight millimeter better, which I'm happy these are. These are carbon plated. There's a carbon fly plate in here to help with that energy return, responsiveness, that bounce, um, help you run a little bit faster, hopefully. Um, but yeah, they're, they seem very responsive. Um, the top is, I mean, see-through, so they're super breathable. Um, I mean, pretty much the entire shoe is, is see-through. So should help with keeping moisture off the feet, um, keeping the feet cool and um, which is going to help with preventing blisters and things like that. So good stuff from that um, perspective. One thing I do want to note um, is I love the extra cushion in the heel. i see if you guys can see this, but there's extra cushioning around the heel and ankle area, which is going to be super beneficial, I think, on those long runs like the marathon. Um, so I, I really like that addition. Like I said, I haven't put any miles on these yet. So when I do, I will update, update you guys, but they seem to be a well put together pair of shoes and I can't wait to toe the line in these in April. So that is pretty much um, my marathon shoe rotation, but I do have two more pairs I'd like to go over that I've ran in and actually raced in. So. We're going to move to the Nike Zagama trail shoes. Now, these are some of my favorite shoes for trails. Um, I ran my first ultra in these back in November and I loved the performance. I put about 30 miles on them before the race and then ran the 50 K. So these got about 60 to 70 miles on them. And I, I really have no complaints in these. These weigh 318 grams, which is pretty good for a trail shoe in my opinion. Um, and the drop is four millimeters, so decently um, less than the other shoes, almost half or half um, compared to the marathon rotation shoes, which there's a purpose for that. Um, it's not, it, speed is not as important in the trail shoe, so you're not going to have that um, stack height difference. It's going to be more of a flat neutral shoe to help with support, um, help with just being on your feet for longer amounts of time. On the trails, you're not really pushing pace quite as much as you are on the roads, but that's the reasoning behind four millimeter drop on these. Um, the, the support in these is, is unreal, actually. I, I really like the support, the buildup around the ankle and the heel. They have extra cushioning in these as well, similar to the Vaporfly. Um, and they got the ankle gaiter around the top of the shoe to help keep dust and debris out of your socks or and out of the sock and shoe um, in between there. So that is a very, very good addition to these shoes. Um, they're not super responsive. Obviously, they're a trail shoe. Um, they're not supposed to be super responsive, but the cushioning is very good. And when I ran my 50K, I had no feet issues whatsoever as far as um, blistering, or feet getting worn out, tired, things like that. So all in all, probably my favorite trail shoe that I've ran in. I have the Wild Horse 8s as my everyday shoe, actually. 
um, the Nike Wild Horse 8s, and these are definitely more comfortable and supportive than those. And I have ran a few times in the Wild Horse 8s. They just slowly kind of became my everyday shoe. So, Nike Zagamas, great, great trail shoe. Probably my favorite trail shoe so far. However, that's not without these bad boys. These are the Speedland GS Tams. These were my first trail shoe that I bought when I was training for my first race, which was the Akron Trail Marathon back in July. Um, these shoes uh, I ran my first race in. I did a lot of training in them up into that point, and I really don't have too many complaints with these shoes. They're just not quite as supportive and comfortable as the Zagamas. These come in at 309 grams, so a little bit lighter than the Zagamas, and they're currently kind of in my rotation believe it or not. So these shoes have a hole in the bottom you can cut out and it really helps with drainage. And I don't think it's just the hole that does that. I think it's just the shoe in general drains really well. Um, so anytime it's raining and I've got to go on a mid to long run, I'm going to run in these just because it keeps mo they keep moisture off my feet better. They're not waterproof, but for whatever reason, they seem to keep the water off my feet a little bit better. The drop on these is seven millimeters, so more similar to like my Endorphin Speed 3s. Um, but yeah, these are these are a good shoe as well. I really like the BOA system um, on these, so it's just the click and tighten. And it also has a backing, so you can loose it. You don't, you don't have to pop it out to loosen it. You can click it, you can tighten, and you, then you can actually loosen by going the other way, which is a really cool feature in, in uh, the trail running space because being on your feet for long amounts of time, your feet are going to swell up. So it is nice to be able to just be able to click that back and get you a little bit looser on the shoe. Um, the traction is awesome on these. I didn't mention that on any of the other shoes. Um, the Zagamas are good. I mean, the only shoes I'm really worried about traction are um, on my trail shoes. And these are very good. Um, like I said, I ran my first race in these, the Akron Trail Marathon and I had no complaints. I had a little bit of rubbing um, during that race, which caused a blister, but that was more because my socks weren't fit right. I had some light um, cushioning socks and I should have went with some heavier cushioning socks. So that was my fault, but uh, nonetheless, these are a good shoe. And like I said, I still do my rainy day runs in them. One cool feature I almost forgot to mention about these is you can actually buy carbon plates for these. So these are not carbon plated shoes when you get them but there's an option to buy carbon plates and you can pull the sole out, um, pop the carbon plates on and you're good to go there. So these are carbon plated shoes if you want them to be. Another thing to know about Speedland is once they sell out of a shoe, they don't bring them back. So I highly doubt you can get these in many sizes anymore, but um, they have shoes that are basically the same coming out in different colors that you can get. So that's it guys. That is the shoe rotation. That's all the shoes um, in my arsenal right now. Um, the three main ones, obviously, are uh, the Nike Invincible Run 3s, the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3s, and the Nike Vaporflies because I'm currently in a marathon build right now. However, since I was going over shoes, I wanted to just touch on the trail shoes that I've used and have come to like. So those will be coming back out after the marathon prep's over and we start shifting gears uh, for Mohican. So I'd like to thank you guys for sticking around, um, watching this episode of the Sub 330 Marathon Build. Um, I hope you picked something up in it. Um, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. Uh, please like and subscribe to stay up to date and we'll be launching some more episodes of the Sub 330 Build coming soon. Remember to do something hard each and every day and watch your life transform.